rates, ratios, and proportions. Our objective is to write and use ratios, rates, and unit rates, as well as write and solve proportions. Why learn this? Ratios and proportions are used to draw accurate maps. Let's start with some vocabulary. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. A proportion is a statement that two ratios are equivalent. A rate is a ratio of two quantities with different units, like 34 miles for every two gallons. A unit rate is a rate with a quantity of one unit. So miles per gallon, one unit. Cross products. In the proportion, A divided by B equals C divided by D, the products A times D and C times B are cross products. A scale is a ratio between two sets of measurements. For example, one inch is five miles. These are often used for maps. Scale drawing uses a scale to represent an object as smaller or larger than the actual object. Let's look at using some ratios. The ratio of faculty members to students at a college is 1 to 15. There are 675 students. How many faculty members are there? Well, if there is one faculty member for every 15 students, you can write it as a fraction to help you out. All right, so one faculty for every 15 students. We want to know how many faculty there are if there are 675 students. So set up a proportion. 1 over 15, so faculty is on the top and your students are on the bottom. And then solve. We want to get x by itself. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 675, and then simplify. So when you have 675 times 1 divided by 15, it's essentially the same as saying 615 divided, or sorry, 675 divided by 15. And when you do so, you end up with 45 faculty members. Let's look at finding unit rates. Takaru Kobayashi of Japan ate 53.5 hot dogs in 12 minutes to win a contest. Find the unit rate. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. So we want to simplify. Well, x is kind of already by itself, but we want a unit rate. So we want to go 53.5 divided by 12. And when we divide that out, we end up with about 4.46. So he ate approximately 4.46 hot dogs per minute. A rate such as 12 inches for one foot in which two quantities are equal. You know there are 12 inches in one foot. So the top and the bottom are like the same thing. But they use different units. When they use different units, but represent the same quantity, it's called a conversion factor. To convert a rate from one set of units to another, you're going to multiply by this thing called a conversion factor. Let's look at an example. As you go deeper underground, the Earth's temperature increases. In some places, it may increase by 25 degrees per kilometer. What is this rate in degrees per meter? Well, let's start with setting up a conversion factor. 
you have 25 degrees Celsius for one kilometer. You want this to be in meters. So one kilometer is the same thing as saying 1,000 meters. Just like 12 inches is one foot, well, one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So when you multiply by a conversion factor, you're going to get what this 25 degrees Celsius is at 1,000 meters. Or per meter, I should say. So simplify. So we have 25 degrees Celsius times 1 kilometer and 1 kilometer times 1,000 meters. And when we multiply the bottom and the top and then we simplify, we have 0 0.025 degrees Celsius for every 1 meter And that is the conversion factor. However, why don't you try this next one on your own? Now that you've had a chance to try it on your own, let's try it together. This one's a little bit more challenging because you have to do more than just one conversion. You have two. All right, the dwarf seahorse Hippocampus zosteri swims at a rate of 52.68 feet per hour. What is the speed in inches per minute? So you're changing from feet to inches and then from hours to minutes. Let's convert the speed to inches per hour first. So we're going to kind of ignore the other piece of it. So we're converting from the speed to inches per hour. So we're going from feet to inches. To convert the first quantity in a rate, multiply a conversion factor that with that unit in the second quantity. So we have 52.68 feet times, and it's 12 inches for one foot. Because originally it's 52.68 feet. Notice they're on a diagonal here. So when we multiply, we're going to end up with 632.16 inches in an hour. So we've just all we've done is we've changed this feet into inches. Step one complete. However, we need to also change it into from hours to minutes. So convert this speed to inches per minute. Well, we know there are 60 minutes in an hour. So 632.16 times 1 over 60. Or, when you notice you're multiplying, if you simplify, there's 1 on the top and 1 on the bottom here, you can just simply go 632.16 divided by 60, leaving you with 10.536 inches. So, the dwarf seahorse travels at a speed of 10.536 inches per minute. Let's look at the cross products property. In a proportion, cross products are equal. So, now to have this happen, a proportion, you have to have an equal sign in between. If it's got multiplication, you're not doing the cross products property. So make sure you have an equal sign, step one. Now, when you do the cross products, you make a cross. So you go two times six equals three times four. You could go 3 times 4 equals 2 times 6. It doesn't matter. They're on both, either side of the equation. Algebraically, you would have a times d equals b times c. Keep in mind, you can't have a 0 as a denominator. So therefore, b can't be 0 and d can't be 0. But let's try practicing. Solve each proportion. So we want to use the cross products property. So we're going to start with 5 times w equals, and then do the other cross, so 9 times 3. And now you can simplify. So you have 5w on the left equals 
27. We want to solve for w. We want w by itself. Therefore, we are going to divide both sides by 5, leaving us with w equals 27 fifths. And you can leave it as a fraction. If you want, you can throw that into a calculator and get a decimal. Either answer is fine. All right, let's try b. b is a little bit trickier because we have a binomial as one of the pieces in our proportion. Think of it when you're doing this as though it has parentheses around it because it's essentially it's assumed when you're dealing with a fraction. So we're going to start with our 8 times 12. So we have 8 times 12 equals, and the other side of our equation is 1 times x plus 10. And now let's simplify. So we have 8 times 12 which is 96, and now we need to distribute. So we have 1 times x, which is x, and 1 times 10, well, that's just 10. And now we want to solve. We want to get x by itself, so we're going to subtract 10 from both sides of our equation, and that leaves us with 86 equals x. Let's look at a real-world application. On the map, the distance from Chicago to Evanston is 0.625 inches. What is the actual distance? So, for every inch on this map, it's 18 miles. This is kind of common to see on any map. Now, on our map, we have the 1 inch and then our actual is 18 miles. So if from Chicago to Evanston it's 0.625 inches, exactly how far is it to go from Chicago to Evanston? Well, let's set up a proportion. 1 over 18 equals 0.625 divided by x. Well, we need to get x by itself. And to do this, the cross products property is very helpful. So we're going to cross and we're going to go 1 times x equals 18 times 0.625. And now we can simplify. So 1 times x is x and 18 times 0.625 is 11.25. Therefore, the actual distance is 11 and a quarter miles. Let's try this next one. The actual distance between North Chicago and Waukegan is 4 miles. What is the distance on the map? Round to the nearest tenth. Well, once again, our map is 1 inch for every 18 miles. This time we know that the distance between North Chicago and Waukegan is 4 miles. So we have our miles this time, and we want to know how far the distance is on the map. So we're going to use cross products, 1 times 4 and 18 times x. And then we simplify. We're going to divide both sides by 18, so we want to get x by itself, which leaves us with 0.2 is about what x is. Therefore, the distance on the map is about 0.2 inches. And that completes our lesson on rates, ratios, and proportions.